we have already talked about the quantities. We say that these quantities are basically those things we can what we can measure in phases. So you can check the description box below there to get the video on this measurement. Now we look at scalar quantities as those quantities that do have they have magnitude but they do not have what direction. So they have the magnitude and they do not have what direction. So examples of these um, scalar quantities include your distance, mass, volume, density, time, temperature, and so on. Okay, they all fall under the scalar quantity. So these ones they have magnitude, but they don't have what direction. All right. Now for the vector quantities, we refer these quantities as those ones that have both magnitude and what and direction. So examples include your displacement, your velocity, acceleration, weight, force, and momentum, and so on. Okay, so they all fall under the vector quantities. So the difference between these two is that the scalars they have magnitude but they don't have direction, while the vectors have magnitude and they have both direction. Alright, so in the operation of this scalar and vector quantities how do we add and subtract these uh, scalar and vector quantities all right so we said that the, for the scalars okay we use the ordinary arithmetic to uh, to operate on them okay meaning that we can just for example let's look at this we can just say five centimeter plus five centimeter is equal to ten centimeter this is so we do not consider direction Okay, so it makes the arithmetic to be what to be simple. Okay, to operate. Then for the vector quantity, we use the geometric arithmetic to operate on them. Now, this geometric arithmetic we consider the this the, the direction okay of that word particular vector quantity. So that makes it a little bit complicated when you look compare with the scalar. Quantities. So in this video, we are going to focus more on the vector quantities, okay? Because the scalars are quite simple to what to operate. Now, for the vector quantities, if we are adding and subtracting for vectors, we use these different methods. We have about four methods we can use to operate on these vector quantities. The first one there is the arithmetic method, okay? We have the right angle method, the parallelogram method, and the triangular method. So what is the, the first one, let's call it F1, to be equal to 5 Newton, and we have the second force there, F2, to be equal to 4 Newton, respectively, okay? And they act in the same direction. So this one is coming from this direction, F1 is coming from this direction and F2 is also coming from this one direction. So how do we get the resultant? The resultant is the cumulative or the, the sum of this one too. Alright, so this will give us that since they are moving in the same direction, okay, we are going to have that our resultant will be equal to F1 plus one F2 because they are in the same direction. So that we have that our F1 is 5 newton plus f2 is what is 4 newton so this will give us what 9 newton okay why because they are moving in the same what? direction now what of if they are in different direction assuming they are in different direction then we are going to have that our resultant will be equal to f1 minus what f2 why? Because they are not in the same what direction. They are moving in opposite direction. We are going to have what this such a way that we have five minus what four, which is equal to one newton. Okay, so that is for opposite direction. But the question says they are moving in the same what direction. So this becomes our what, our answer. Okay, so that is for the the arithmetic method. So we consider the direction and also the magnitude, okay. 
Now the second one, second method we are to look at is the right angle method. Now we say that this is achieved when we have a right angle triangle. Okay, so the right angle triangle we have this angle here, which is equal to what? 90 watts degree. So from our Pythagoras theory, we have that a square from following this diagram will be equal to b squared plus c squared. Okay, that is the Pythagoras rule. Okay, we are going to have this equation now. So if we this is the longest side which we call the hypotenuse. Okay, and the angle facing here is the opposite. Y C is the what? Is the adjacent. All right. So now let's look at this question. It says that suppose a man from A walks three kilometer eastward and then four kilometer southward. Okay. Now what is his displacement from the starting point A and at what angle? of inclination are we going to get so if we draw this diagram we say that the resultant we call it theta okay that is from this starting point to this displacement point here the angle there is what is theta all right so we can calculate our arrow from the pythagoras rule it will be equal to the square root of three square plus four words square so that we are going to have that this will be so let's write this here so we are going to have that r is equal to square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared so that we are going to have that this will be 9 plus 16 which is equal to 20 right so our resultant is equal to 20 sorry this is 9 plus 16 we are going to have 25 rather than 20 so the square root of 25 will be equal to what 5 so therefore our resultant is what is 5 okay so we are going to have it in 5 kilometers because that's what we are giving we are giving 3 km and 4 km. So the unit will be in what? A kilometer. So that is our result. Then for the angle, now if you look at this, this is the opposite, is 4. Then our hypotenuse, which is R, we calculated it as what? As 5. So if we use our sign, which says opposite all over the hypotenuse, right? Okay, so this will be equal to. We are going to have opposite there is 4 km, then the hypotenuse there is what? It's what we just calculated, which is what? 5. Okay, so therefore we are going to write that theta is equal to the sine inverse of 4 over what? Over 5. Okay, so now if you press your calculator, sine inverse of 4 over 5 will be equal to. 53.13 degree. Okay, so that is the what? The angle. So that is for the right angle method. So in the next video, we are going to look at the parallelogram and triangular what? method and see how we solve questions using this what? Method. Alright, so if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, I would love you to do that and make sure you click the notification bell to get updates of